Smash drunk. I'm Batman. Hello, and thank you for deciding to watch this video. This series is one of my favorites. It started out as me naively thinking that certain particular arcade games should have been ported to the Super Nintendo, but somehow missed the boat. But in reality, a lot of these games, let's be honest, could never have been ported to the Super Nintendo in any meaningful way. Sure, there are some arcade ports that work wonderfully, like Turtles in Time, Sunset Riders, and Super Smash TV, but most of these games have no chance of being accurately represented on lesser hardware. I'll be honest, I'm only using the video title as a pathetic excuse to talk about arcade games that I missed out on, because I love arcade games. I've already covered popular titles like X-Men, The Simpsons, and Alien vs. Predator, as well as some more obscure stuff like Boogie Wings, Violent Storm, and Shadow Force. So let's get going. Here's 10 more arcade games you should be playing right now. There have been tons of Batman games over the years, but one I can remember seeing in arcades back when it was first released in 1990 was this one, simply titled Batman, made by Atari Games, based off of the 1989 Tim Burton movie starring Michael Keaton. This one is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that borrows the structure of games like Rolling Thunder, where you have two planes to jump between and all sorts of enemies popping up out of doors and windows. As a game, it's okay. Batman's attacks are kind of goofy, like this weird floaty jump kick he does. But what makes this one fun is how hard it leans into the movie. You get cutscenes, tons of voice samples, in case you forget who you're playing as. I'm Batman. Seriously, you hear him say he's Batman like three dozen times in this playthrough. Wait, who are you again? I'm Batman. Oh yeah. But the game follows the movie closely. There's a level that takes place in an art museum, you chase bad guys in the Batmobile, you gun down helicopters, and you eventually fight the Joker in the clock tower. This is a really short playthrough, it's over in less than 20 minutes, but it's still a good time. Wait till they get a load of me. How's this for a title? Here we've got Big Fight, Big Trouble in the Atlantic Ocean. Sounds like they were trying for a Big Trouble in Little China kind of a vibe. How cool would that be to have a beat-em-up based on that movie? But anyway, this beat-em-up was made by Tatsumi in 1992, and right away we've got some quality translation work here. Give fear of death to pity human. Now I came to my sense, can you take me into partnership? Sure! You get three characters to choose from, and you know the drill here. There's the slow, strong guy, the quicker, faster gal, and the balanced guy. But what's cool is that you unlock new playable characters the further you progress. And some of these sprites are gigantic, which is kind of cool to see. Other than that, though, this is just your typical beat-em-up action, nothing all that unique, but it's still an enjoyable playthrough because all the basics are executed well. You fight through a gym, a bar, a zoo, and there's also a one-on-one -on -one fighting mode here for good measure. If you dig 90s-era beat-em-ups like this, you'll have a good time with this one. Here's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game from 1991 made by Taito called Solitary Fighter, although in Japan, it's the second game in a series called Violence Fight. Man, you gotta love that name. What stands out about this game, first and foremost, are the huge sprites. This game looks fantastic. Also, this isn't your typical fighting game. Some settings are structured more like a beat-em-up, where you've got some space to move around in, complete with crates you can smash, and the people standing outside even throw bottles at you. The controls are really simple. It compares closer to games like Pit Fighter, the arcade version, not the god-awful Super Nintendo port. But most importantly, I have to point out that you fight a bear and a tiger. Yeah, this game is completely ridiculous in the best way. I recommend checking it out. Next, there's OutZone, made by Toa Plan in 1990, and if you're looking for carnage, craziness, and absurd arcade difficulty, then this is your game. It's a top-down run-and-gun that's really fast-paced, with aliens, plasma beams, robots, lasers, bombs, bosses that take up nearly half the screen. But thankfully, your character can pick up tons of weapon upgrades, shields, flamethrowers, this bizarre yo-yo thing that wrecks everything in its path. This game is nothing but chaos. It's a fun time, but geez, this is one of the hardest arcade games I've ever played. A second player makes a ton of difference here, but while this game is pretty good, if you decide to go it alone, be prepared for a lot of frustration. Charlie Ninja is an action platformer made in 1994 by Mitchell. No, not that Mitchell. And this is another one of those crazy arcade games that's just all over the place. You're in the Wild West, you're in a village in the mountains, you're in what looks like Morph Moth's level in Mega Man X2, then you're in a football stadium. This game is nuts. 
The art style really goes a long way here, making this look like some kind of Tex Avery meets early Cartoon Network style when it comes to the visuals, but beyond that, this game is pretty solid. The controls are consistent, and there's not too much arcade cheapness here, plus it can be played co-op with a second player. It's a quality playthrough, I mean, it's worth it just to see this final boss, who looks like Rick Sanchez bought a bunch of Dr. Wily's old stuff from a pawn shop. Here's something a little different, it's called Evil Stone, made by Spacey Industrial back in 1990, and it's actually an unlicensed game made on Taito hardware without their permission, so this game is really rare, and it's actually pretty fun. It's a bit like a puzzle beat-em-up, you jump around on these floating tiles killing bad guys, and you can only jump in four directions. You have to proceed to the end and beat the boss before the time limit expires. This game is much tougher than it looks, and I admit I might be missing some stuff about this game because there's just not a whole lot of information about this one out there, but I wanted to point this one out since it's kind of an odd game and it's a pretty rare cabinet. Ah, here we go, a gallery shooter where you make aliens and monsters explode. Now that's my kind of game. This one is called Laser Ghost, made by Sega in 1989, and it's like if you took the Terminator 2 arcade game and gave it a theme that combined Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghostbusters. It's always a bit tricky to recommend arcade games like this because if you're going to play this any way you can, then you're probably going to be using a controller to move the crosshair around, and that's not always ideal. But in this game, the action moves quickly enough so that a controller or a joystick it can make do. And really, you'd be doing yourself a favor playing this one. The pixel art and sprite work here are outstanding, and it's one of those game experiences where you want to keep playing just to see what's next. Definitely check this one out. Next we've got Lethal Crash Race, a 1993 game made by the same folks who cranked out the Arrow Fighters games, and this is a top-down racing title that plays like Spy Hunter on steroids. You've got eight characters to choose from, and you have to beat every character that you don't pick in a race, and the way you do that is through sheer carnage. This is a really fun one where you're plowing into fruit stands and roadside restaurant tables, and the name of the game is to beat your rival to the finish. If you do that eight times, you beat the game, and each of the eight different characters has their own end. This is well worth checking out, it's an entertaining game that's a fun playthrough. This next game is pretty straightforward, it's called Hydra, made by Atari Games in 1990. It's similar to other arcade games like Aqua Jack, where you control a vehicle, in this case a hovercraft, and you blast anything that appears on the screen while collecting... what are those? Chaos Emeralds? You also collect money to buy upgrades for weapons, armor, and fuel, and apparently you play as Razor Ramon. Seriously, all that guy is missing is a toothpick and like 27 gold chains around his neck. This is a solid game. I really enjoyed seeing all the different locations. You start out in the Grand Canyon, and then you're in some kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland, then you're in a jungle with planes dropping bombs on you. This is one of those games that has very simple gameplay, but it's still worth checking out. Finally, we've got Rail Chase, made in 1991 by Sega. This is one of those arcade cabinets like Afterburner where you sit down and the chair moves back and forth, but even playing this one any way you can, this is still a fun game. You play in a first-person viewpoint shooting a mounted machine gun on an out-of-control hand car with a track splitting up at various points, and it's up to you to choose the right path lest you go careening into a trap. This game is very similar to the Jurassic Park arcade game, where it's just a non-stop adrenaline rush where you're getting chased while dodging all sorts of stuff in your way. Although, one really strange thing I have to point out is the opening cutscene. Uh, why do I suddenly feel the urge to start singing Take On Me? Anyway, this is a really short playthrough that's over in less than 20 minutes, but it's still well worth playing, and if you like this one, there's a sequel that's worth seeking out as well. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.